I was looking for a cheap apartment to rent on Craigslist, and I found one that seemed too good to be true. It was a spacious one, bedroom unit in a nice neighborhood with hardwood floors, a fireplace, and a balcony. The rent was only $500 a month, and the landlord said he was looking for someone to move in as soon as possible. I contacted the landlord and he said he was out of town, but he could arrange for me to see the place. He said he would send me the keys and the lease agreement by mail, and I just had to send him a deposit of $500 through Western Union. He said he trusted me and he didn't need to do a background check or anything. He said he was a Christian and he believed in honesty and kindness. I was a bit skeptical, but I really wanted the place. I thought it was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I didn't want to miss it. I decided to take the risk and send him the money. He gave me his name, address, and phone number, and he sounded very friendly and sincere. I received the keys and the lease agreement a few days later, and I was excited to see the apartment. I drove to the address he gave me, and I was shocked by what I saw. It was not a nice building at all. It was a rundown motel with broken windows, graffiti, and trash everywhere. The apartment number he gave me did not exist. There was no such unit in the motel. I realized I had been scammed. I tried to call him, but his phone was disconnected. I tried to track him down, but his name and address were fake. He had taken my money and disappeared. I felt angry and stupid. I had fallen for a classic Craigslist scam. He had used fake photos and information to lure me in, and he had taken advantage of my trust and desperation. He had probably done this to many other people before me, and he would do it again. I reported him to the police in Craigslist, but they said there was not much they could do. They said these scams were very common and it was hard to catch the perpetrators. They said, I should have been more careful and done more research before sending money to a stranger. I learned my lesson the hard way. I lost $500 and my dream apartment. I never found out who he was or where he was from. I still have nightmares about that motel. This story is based on a true incident that occurred in 2017 in Colorado Springs. The victim was scammed by a man who claimed to be renting out an apartment on Craigslist. The man used fake photos and information to trick the victim into sending him money through Western Union. The victim later discovered that the apartment did not exist and that the man had vanished with his money. I was looking for a roommate to share my two-bedroom apartment in downtown Chicago, and I posted an ad on Craigslist. I got a lot of responses, but most of them were either sketchy, creepy, or incompatible. I was about to give up when I received an email from a girl named Lisa. She said she was 25 years old, a graphic designer, and a recent transplant from New York. She said she was looking for a friendly and clean roommate and that she liked my apartment and the location. She also attached a photo of herself and she looked pretty and normal. I replied to her email and we exchanged a few more messages. She seemed nice and polite and we had some things in common. She said she wanted to see the apartment in person and we agreed to meet on Saturday afternoon. She gave me her phone number and said she would text me when she was on her way. On Saturday, I cleaned up the apartment and waited for her text. Around 2 p.m., I got a message from her saying that she was running late. 
but that she would be there soon. I texted her back and said it was okay and that I would wait for her. Half an hour later, I got another message from her saying that she was outside the building and that she needed me to buzz her in. I looked out the window and saw a car parked in front of the entrance. I recognized it as the same car that had been following me for the last few days. I had noticed this car several times before when I was going to work, coming back home or running errands. It was a black sedan with tinted windows and no license plate. It always seemed to be behind me or near me, but never too close or too obvious. I thought it was just a coincidence, or maybe someone who worked or lived in the same area as me. But now I realized that it was not a coincidence at all. It was Lisa. I felt a surge of fear and panic. How did she find me? How long had she been stalking me? What did she want from me? I quickly grabbed my phone and called 911. I told them that there was a stalker outside my apartment and that I needed help. They said they would send a patrol car as soon as possible and that I should stay inside and lock the doors. I hung up the phone and ran to the door. I made sure it was locked and bolted, and then I moved away from the window. I heard the buzzer ring several times, followed by loud knocks on the door. Then I heard her voice. Hey, it's Lisa. Open up. I'm here to see the apartment. I didn't answer. I just stayed silent and hoped that she would go away. Come on, don't be rude. Let me in. She sounded calm and friendly, but I'd sensed something sinister behind her words. I know you're in there. I can hear you breathing. She sounded angry and impatient now. Open the damn door or I'll break it down. She started to kick and pound on the door with all her strength. The door shook and rattled, but it held up. Stop it! Leave me alone, I shouted. She ignored me and continued to attack the door. I'm not leaving until you let me in. You're mine now. You can't escape from me. She sounded crazy and obsessed. I backed away from the door and looked around for something to defend myself with. I grabbed a kitchen knife and held it in my hand. I prayed that the police would arrive soon. I heard sirens in the distance, getting closer and closer. Then I heard screeching tires and slamming doors outside. Then I heard gunshots. I dropped to the floor and covered my ears. The gunshot stopped after a few seconds, followed by silence. I waited for a few minutes not daring to move or make a sound. Then I heard someone knock on the door again. Hello, this is the police. Are you okay? I got up slowly and walked to the door. I looked through the peephole and saw two officers standing outside. They looked concerned and relieved. I unlocked the door and opened it slightly. Yes. Yes, I'm okay, I said. The officers smiled and nodded. We're glad to hear that, one of them said. We got here just in time, the other one said. What happened, I asked. They looked at each other briefly, then at me. She's dead, one of them said. She tried to shoot us when we approached her car, the other one said. We had no choice but to return fire, one of them said. They pointed at the car parked in front of the entrance. The windshield was shattered by bullets and blood stained the seats. I saw a body slumped over the steering wheel. It was Lisa. I felt a mix of shock, relief, and sadness. 
I didn't know who she was or why she did what she did. I didn't know how she found me or what she wanted from me. I didn't know how long she had been stalking me or what she would have done to me if she had gotten inside. I only knew that she was gone and that I was safe. The officers asked me some questions and took my statement. They said they would investigate the case and try to find out more about her. They said they would contact me if they needed anything else from me. They said they were sorry for what I had gone through and that I should seek counseling if I needed it. They said they would stay outside until I felt comfortable enough to leave. I thanked them and closed the door. I sat down on the couch and tried to calm down. I looked at my phone and saw that I had missed several calls and texts from my friends and family. They were worried about me and wanted to know if I was okay. I decided to call them back and tell them what happened. I decided to pack my things and move out of the apartment as soon as possible. I decided to delete my Craigslist ad and never use it again. I decided to start a new life, away from the horrors of Craigslist. I was looking for a job on Craigslist, and I found one that seemed ideal for me. It was a data entry position with flexible hours, good pay, and remote work. The employer was a company called Data Solutions, and they said they were looking for someone to enter customer information into their database. They said they would provide me with a laptop, a software, and a training manual. I applied for the job and I got a reply from the employer. He said he was impressed by my resume and he wanted to hire me. He said he would send me the laptop and the software by mail and I just had to sign a contract and send him a copy of my ID. He said he trusted me and he didn't need to do an interview or anything. He said he was a Christian and he believed in honesty and loyalty. I was happy and excited. I thought it was a great opportunity and I didn't want to miss it. I decided to accept the offer and send him the contract and my ID. He gave me his name, email, and phone number and he sounded very friendly and genuine. I received the laptop and the software a few days later and I was eager to start working. I opened the laptop and installed the software, following the instructions in the manual. The software looked simple and easy to use. It asked me to enter some customer information, such as name, address, phone number, email, credit card number, email, credit card number, etc. It said that this was a test run and that I would be paid $20 for each customer I entered. I thought it was a fair deal, and I started entering the information. I found some customer data online from various sources, such as social media, online directories, etc. I entered about 50 customers in an hour, and I felt proud of myself. I thought I was doing a good job. I emailed the employer and told him that I had completed the test run. He replied quickly and congratulated me. He said he was very pleased with my work and he wanted me to continue working for him. He said he would pay me $1,000 every week through PayPal. He said he would send me more customer data soon. I was thrilled and grateful. I thought I had found the perfect job. I thanked him and told him that I was looking forward to working with him. But then everything changed. The next day, I received a phone call from an angry man. He said he was a customer of Data Solutions, and he accused me of stealing his identity. He said that someone had used his credit card to make fraudulent purchases online, totaling over $10,000.
He said that he had traced the source of the fraud to my IP address and that he had reported me to the police. I was shocked and confused. I tried to explain that I was just doing data entry for data solutions and that I had no idea what he was talking about. He said that Data Solutions was a scam company and that they had hired me to steal customer information for them. He said that they had sent me a fake laptop, a fake software, and a fake contract, and that they had used me as a pawn in their criminal scheme. He said that they had done this to many other people before me and that they would do it again. He said that I was in big trouble and that I should expect a visit from the police soon. He hung up on me. I panicked. I tried to call the employer, but his phone was disconnected. I tried to email him, but his email was invalid. I tried to contact Ada Solutions, but their website was down. They had disappeared with my money, my ID, and my trust. I realized I had been scammed. I had fallen for a classic Craigslist scam. They had used fake ads, fake offers, fake documents, fake products, fake payments, fake testimonials, fake testimonials, fake reviews, fake logos, fake seals, fake certificates, fake certificates, fake everything. They had taken advantage of my desperation, my naivety, my ignorance. They had made me an accomplice in their crime. I felt guilty, ashamed, scared. I had lived through a nightmare, a nightmare that happened on Craigslist. This story is based on a true incident that occurred in 2018 in California. The victim was scammed by a company called Data Solutions, who claimed to be hiring data entry workers on Craigslist. The company sent the victim a laptop and a software, which were used to steal customer information from various sources. The victim later discovered that the company was fraudulent and that he had been involved in identity theft. I was looking for a roommate on Craigslist, and I found one that seemed compatible with me. She was a young woman who said she was a student at a local college. She said she had a two-bedroom apartment, and she was looking for someone to share the rent and the utilities. She said she was clean, quiet, and respectful, and she expected the same from me. I contacted her and she said she was happy to hear from me. She said she wanted to meet me in person and show me the apartment. She said she was available the next day and she gave me her address and phone number. She said she was looking forward to meeting me. I agreed to meet her and I drove to her address the next day. It was a nice building in a decent neighborhood. I parked my car and I called her to let her know I was there. She said she would come down and meet me at the lobby. I waited for her, but she never showed up. I called her again, but she didn't answer. I texted her, but she didn't reply. I started to get worried, and I wondered if something had happened to her. I decided to go up to her apartment and see if she was there. I took the elevator to the fourth floor, and I looked for her door number. I found it, and I knocked on it. No one answered. I knocked again. Still no answer. I tried the door handle. It was unlocked. I opened the door, and I stepped inside. I wish I hadn't. The apartment was a mess. There were clothes, dishes, trash, and blood everywhere. There was a foul smell in the air and flies buzzing around. There was a couch, a TV, 
a table, and a chair in the living room. There was also a body. It was a man who looked like he had been stabbed multiple times. He was lying on the floor with a pool of blood around him. He had duct tape over his mouth and his eyes were wide open. He looked terrified. I screamed and I ran out of the apartment. I called 911 and I told them what I had seen. They told me to stay calm and wait for them outside. They arrived soon after and they went inside the apartment. They came out a few minutes later and they told me what had happened. They said that the woman who had posted the ad on Craigslist was not a student, but a serial killer. She had lured several men into her apartment using fake photos and information. She had tortured, killed, and robbed them using various weapons. She had kept their bodies in her apartment until she ran out of space. She had then decided to look for a roommate to get rid of some of the evidence. They said that they had been looking for her for months, but they had no leads. They said that they had traced her phone number, but it was a burner phone. They said that they had checked her email, but it was a fake account. They said that they had no idea who she was or where she was from. They said that I was lucky to be alive and that I had escaped from a trap. They said that she had probably planned to kill me too if I had entered her apartment. They said that it was a nightmare that happened on Craigslist. This story is based on a true incident that occurred in 2016 in Houston. The victim was scammed by a woman who claimed to be looking for a roommate on Craigslist. The woman used fake photos and information to lure the victim into her apartment, where she had several dead bodies. The woman was later identified as Valerie Busick McDaniel, who had killed at least four men with her boyfriend, Leon Jacob. The couple were arrested after a police sting operation. <laughs>